Welcome back Nailville Foodies and we're back again with another quick video tutorial but before you do anything I need you to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button right now. Also don't forget to hit the little notification button that's the bell button so you can get all notifications of when we post up our videos immediately because I promise you you don't want to miss what's coming out of Neoville, especially today. So guys I have been having a craving for some beef short ribs and so that's what we're going to do today i have about um a little over five pounds of beef short ribs and y'all they pretty meaty too kind of big just the way i like them i'm gonna tear them up and we have um of course our veggies we have our celery our carrots our onions we have some sprigs of thyme we have uh garlic we're gonna be throwing in a little tomato paste, beef broth. I have my browning uh, seasoning, my jungo seasoning, um, our roasted garlic and herb, and also we have a new star of the show, and this is a Mediterranean sauce um, that you can slow cook or braise, simmer. This is from uh, Misa Vita. This is going to be my first time using their sauce. They sent this to me to try out. So we're excited about that. So all I need you to do is sit back, stay tuned while we get to cooking, honey. All right, guys. So we are back. And as you can see, guys, these were some really thick, uh, meaty short ribs. Um, I almost wanted to cut them in half, but it's okay. They turned out really good. So, normally, um, people would get out the pan, including me, and after they season it and everything how they want, they would go ahead and sear it on in a, either in a skillet or a pot on top of the stove. But I'm going to show you a quick, well, yeah, I guess it's a quicker way, but it's also an easier way to get this done. And so, what I did, I got me a cookie sheet and put it over a pan. Now, you don't have to use a cookie sheet. I just do that because it's easy cleanup. And so, what we did, we put olive oil on our meat. We also generously um, seasoned it with salt and pepper because, guys, you got to understand, this is a thick cut of meat. Um, and so, we're using um, salt, pepper, and I'm also going to be using my roasted garlic and herb seasoning. Guys, you can use basically whatever seasonings you want at this point to season your meat. Um, but I wanted to kind of keep it simple because I'm going to be adding a lot of other things to kind of the stock pot when we braise these. And so after you get your seasonings on that you like, you go ahead and, uh, massage all of your, um, seasonings and your olive oil in the meat then we stuck it in the oven on 425 for like 20 to 30 minutes and as you can see it looks like it's been seared in the oven you even have those um bits that you would see in the bottom of a skillet and so if you're not a professional don't do it like this okay guys you can take your meat off and then pour it but um me thinking i know what i'm doing I just went ahead and tilted the pan and the olive oil and the juices that were in from the ribs, we put it in a pot and then we cut up our celery, onions, and carrots. And we're going to let this cook for about two or three minutes just so the onions can kind of get a little bit uh, translucent. And then after we let this cook for a few minutes, um, oh, and our beef ribs, we just got that set into the side. We did not put that back in the oven. We're going to add that to this stock pot. And so after um, cooking the onions, peppers, and carrots for a little bit, we went ahead and put in our garlic. And we only cooked that for like one or two minutes. We didn't want any burnt garlic. So be careful when you're cooking your garlic. Um, then we added about one to two tablespoons of our tomato paste that's a thickener and we're going to be adding a tablespoon of our browning sauce and our um 
I think it's called Jugo. It's kind of like, it's like a Mexican Worcestershire sauce, but it's really concentrated. And so we added about a teaspoon of that in there, um, along with some sprig of thyme's thyme. And then we're adding our new sauce um, that we're trying from uh, Miso. Misa? I think it's Misa. I'm messing up that name. But, um... Yeah, that is a Mediterranean. It has like the capers. It's really spicy, but it's going to balance out the flavor because it's not going to be hot, but it does have some spice to it, which was really good with this. But you can braise and use whatever type of sauce you want, of course, because it's your kitchen, honey. Do what you want. And then we're adding a large container of beef broth. Um, and I will be adding that whole container and sorry guys that my hand is in the way um, I'd be forgetting that I'm recording but once we added all of that beef broth in what we're going to do is start adding the meat back and this pot I can't tell you what size this pot is but this is a pretty big um, um, cast iron pot so but it worked really good I had like eight big pieces that you've seen. So even if you had, if those were cut in half, 16 of those would fit. This is about, um, it's like five, a little over five pounds of meat. And so we added our beef tips back to the pot. And then all of those bits and pieces that you normally see um, when you sear your meat, we also put that back in the pot as well. And then we finished up by adding the rest of our beef broth. Now we got our oven on 325. And we're going to cook this for a total of two hours. Um, but before we put this back into the oven, um, I'm going to let it boil um, to get it back up to temperature. And then we're going to slide this. We're going to put the top on. Now, I'm going to put the top on for the first hour and then we're going to slide it um, on into our oven then this is the first hour and I'm going to kind of drain some of that oil off of the top of it because you don't want I mean it's olive oil but still the meat is giving off the fat oil as well and you don't want all of that um, inside of there and so we're draining that off then we're going to put it back in the oven without the top for another hour and this is what it looks like when it is complete we're draining it again and as you see the meat is really y'all when I tell, tell y'all this meat was so tender and juicy oh y'all this was fire okay this is fire and so what I'm doing now because I want to thicken up that sauce. I'm pulling out all of the ribs and we're going to uh, be using a cornstarch slurry. And I did two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of water. And we mixed that up till it dissolved and then we added it back to the gravy that we're trying to make. Um, and as you see, um, it's starting to thicken up already, and that's what you want. Um, then we're going to add back our pieces of beef tips back into the pot, and we're going to let this simmer in this pot for another, I would say another 20 minutes just to, you know, get everything gelled together. And once we got everything in the pot um, and we let it simmer, this is the complete um dish now y'all y'all look at that oh y'all when i tell y'all it was so fire and tender my lord look at that y'all it was so tender a lot of the bones fell out fell out of the meat and so i pulled a lot of the bones out already but i also made some um smashed potatoes i need to give y'all my mashed potato recipe recipe as well because it be busting and so now guys we're just getting ready to plate up honey because when i tell you this was off the chain i just need y'all to go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel um share this recipe try this recipe um i promise you 
I promise you, you are going to enjoy this. Okay, I will put the the ingredients in the description box. Also, remember, I do have another channel that I'm starting for the book that I just wrote and was released. Can these bones live? So don't forget to subscribe to that channel. I will put that channel also in the link as well. And guys, there's your there's listen, baby. You better tell somebody about this. Listen, thank you all for tuning in once again. And remember, baby, it's your kitchen. Do what you want.